The revolution has begun. Revolution? How, how did this happen? Planetary revolts can be an absolute nightmare in Stellaris. We really don't want our precious planets leaving the polity of our great empire. But how can we prevent planetary revolts from happening? How can we stop them in their tracks? And how can we also stop the slaves from radicalizing and taking up arms against our beloved empire? Well, in this video, I'm going to cover all of that and let you know how to deal with these problems. So without any further ado, let's dive in. The United Nations of Earth are having a few problems. Their colony here of Skanza is not very happy at all. There is an approval rating of only 24% for the government, that's very, very low, as well as some big effects here from overcrowding. Now all of this could lead to a planetary and indeed system-wide revolt. There are two types of revolts, the first being a regular planetary revolt, which will trigger the situation. And the second is a slave revolt. First, I'm going to look at the regular normal revolt you'll be getting. And then we'll talk briefly about slavery. Slavery is a little different and there are some really easy cures for the slave issues. So if any of your colonies have less than 25% stability, more than 10 pops, and remain in this state for an entire in-game year, a revolt situation will occur. If the colony has any of the slave events, slave uprising events have triggered there, it cannot have a regular revolt. That'll be the slave revolt we talk about later. Additionally, if the colony has changed hand in the last three years, or if it has the stellar culture shock modifier, this limit goes up to eight years, it cannot revolt. Or if the colony has participated in a planetary revolt in the last 15 years, it also is immune to the planetary revolt situation. But if those qualifiers are all false and you've had less than 25 stability and 10 pops for the last year, a revolt situation could trigger. We can look at this in the situation log and this is basically the mechanism by which our planet will undergo a full revolt. First, we're gonna look at all the different things that can happen and then I'll talk about how we can prevent this and keep planets from leaving the warm and loving embrace of our mother empire. The monthly change of this situation is based on a number of factors. If you increase the stability of the planet, decrease employment, increase the army strength, that sort of thing, you will decrease this monthly change. On the other hand, the lower the stability is below 25, if there are any other empires supporting the revolt, if there is any unemployment, if the colony is quite large, above six, pops you'll get positive modifiers here that increase the monthly change. We can also change our approach to this revolt. The first and basic option is to basically do nothing that gives us this minus 10 stability. Next up we can distribute amenities which should increase the overall happiness of the world and therefore boost stability or institute a crackdown allowing you to build armies faster, build strongholds faster, gain stability from soldier jobs at the cost of quite a bit of unity every month and some energy credits for those soldiers. We do have to pay the soldiers a little bit extra just to ensure loyalty to the proper government. And if you're enjoying this video, please revolt for that like button. If you do absolutely nothing and let the revolt tick on, when it gets to stage two, you'll then get a plus 100% ethics attraction to a random ethic. This is going to mean that the revolting empire might be ethically quite opposed to your empire. When we get to stage three, something interesting can happen. The revolt can begin to spread to other colonies in our empire. All colonies within six hyperlane jumps of the revolting colony, in this case it's here in the Critipus system, that have a stability below 35 and at least 20% of the pops on that colony belong to the species chosen as the primary revolting species on your planet under revolt, can gain this spreading the turbulence modifier. This will give it a minus 15 stability on the planet, which is very, very unpleasant. And unless you restore order on this planet, once the revolt finishes, any planet with the spreading turbulence modifier and that remains with less than 35 stability will also join the rebellion. When we reach stage four, at this point, it's possible for another empire in the galaxy to begin supporting our rebellion. In order for a foreign empire to be eligible to support your revolting species, they must either share the same primary species as the species in revolt, or in the case of hive mind or machine intelligence empires, share the same authority type. Additionally, if they have a defensive pact or a non-aggression pact or in the same federation as your empire, they cannot support your rebellion. 
if you continue to do absolutely nothing and let the situation fester, in the end, you will get a complete revolt. When this happens, all hell can break loose. In this case, the population of Skander have rebelled and they have called themselves now the Human Empire. We can either immediately go to war with these rebels and then this is basically a war where you'll have claims on all of their starting systems and if you win the war you can reconquer your worlds or alternatively you can simply let this rebelling empire go. Notice that I never managed to get Minot Prime here below the 35 stability and therefore it has joined the Rebellion. The Rebellion will take control of the system as well as any bordering systems that do not control a colony that is happy and supporting your empire or a bastion starbase. On top of that, any system which does not have a colony or a bastion starbase and is adjacent to two other systems controlled by the Revolt will also join the Rebellion. In this case that is also the Pidatafir system here. And at this point I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is really, really appreciated. If you'd also like to support this channel, there is a link to Patreon down below in the description and you can click the join button just below this video. The Rebelling Empire also gets a navy equal to 80% of its naval capacity. So if they manage to get their hands on some of your anchorages or they have technology boosting their naval capacity, they're going to be coming at you with a big naval force. So so how can we actually deal with this situation? How can we stop a revolt from happening? That's what you want to know, that's what you've come to this video to find out. Basically everything you'll want to do can be done from the planetary management tab for that colony. The easiest and best way to get rid of this situation entirely is to boost the stability on the planet. If you're running negative or low amenities, that can be done by improving the amenities. So I can either distribute amenities here in the situation at a massive cost of consumer goods, or I can do something like building a hollow theater on this planet. Enacting decisions like distribute luxury goods will help as well. Now it may also seem tempting to resettle some of the pops on this planet to another world. I would 100% not recommend you do that because if you resettle pops from a planet with a planetary revolt situation ongoing, that actually advances the progress of this situation further. So don't just try to resettle the pops. On top of that, if you have any overcrowding, building city districts will help you reduce that overcrowding, though there is a limited time limit available here because once this situation reaches 100, the planet will be leaving your empire. As a basic measure here, I've distributed luxuries and for a few months I'll be doing the distribute amenities approach just to boost my amenities enough to get stability above 40. Every point of stability above 40 will reduce the planetary revolt situation. But let's say we don't want to do that, we can also recruit armies. Now for every army you recruit and have on the planet, that will boost the stability a bit further. Luckily I happen to have a little force ready in orbit just to land down on the planet and assist the beleaguered garrison below. You'll notice that by increasing the garrison strength on this planet, I further decrease the planetary revolt situation. So an easy and quick way to boost the garrison on the planet as well as increasing the amount of soldier jobs can be to do something like declaring martial law, forcing some pops to work this new soldier job that appears. Not only will that reduce the unemployment on the planet, but it will also increase the garrison strength by adding additional defensive armies. We can really double down on this measure by instituting a crackdown on the planet. That will then boost the effectiveness of all of these soldiers. But this is quite expensive. I've spent 500 unity and I'm going to be spending a further 30 unity per month to reduce this situation. The best and easiest way to solve this kind of problem is almost always to assess the situation and try to increase the amenities by the use of entertainers or something like that. Increasing amenities will increase the happiness which then in turn boosts the stability. Do watch out for having housing problems and overcrowding. By reducing your overcrowding to zero that eliminates any negative stability modifiers here on your housing part. And then if I build a couple of extra districts like mining districts here and completely remove the unemployment that should further boost stability because employed workers are much happier than unemployed workers and on top of that you lose any of the modifiers which were moving this event, moving this situation forward for having unemployment. But overall the absolute easiest way to prevent this ever happening is making sure no colony ever has a stability below 25. That way the revolt will never fire, it will never reduce your stability yet further and you won't have to worry about this. 
But what do you think about planetary revolts and slave revolts? How have you found them in your games? Please let me know down in the comments below. And if you're struggling with another part of the Stellaris game and you'd like me to make a quick guide video on it, please let me know in the comments too. I'd be happy to help. But what about if your empire requires the use of slaves to improve the economy of your entire civilization? Well, let's talk about how we can prevent slave uprising. Again, slave revolts are heavily influenced by the stability on the planet. If you get down to 40% stability, the slaves radicalizing event can trigger. That gives you minus 20 stability on the planet and lasts for a whopping 20 years. This is the start, basically, of having a slave revolt and the best and easiest way to prevent slave revolts is to stop this ever firing. Never let a planet with slaves go below 40% stability. But if you simply can't keep the stability above 40% and slaves radicalizing triggers, you'll then start getting some more issues. At 25 stability, hunger strikes can happen, which give minus 50% pop resource output, but reduce their food upkeep by 50%. That one isn't too bad of a problem. And if you go all the way down to 10 stability, slave riots can happen for 10 years. That completely removes any resource output from your slaves and massively stifles pop growth speed, army build speed, and planetary build speed. Once you're in this point and you're at very, very low stability, the planet could actually end up fully rebelling from your empire. First off, if you get to this awful place, slave armies can rise up and attempt to seize the planet. If you have no armies on the planet or you're unsuccessful in fighting off the radicalized slaves, you'll then actually lose that colony. In order to bring that colony back into the fold, you will need to declare war on them, but don't worry, you will have a claim on the system that revolted, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, no matter what point you get to in the rebellion, there is a very simple way of simply canceling the whole thing. If you go to your species tab and you free the slaves, even just granting them residence, will completely neuter any slave unrest or slave revolt problem. As you can see, I have finished the slavery. All of the events have now gone away. I still have some stability problems, so it could still trigger a regular planetary revolt. And quite an easy way to deal with this will be to move some of my normal population over to the planet, make sure to push them into roles like specialists or ruler roles so that these high approval pops from your empire have much greater political power than the now free workers. But as long as you do that and you keep the stability above 25%, which is much easier than the 40% needed to quell slavery, you'll be completely fine. Planetary uprising and slave revolts are generally quite an issue. One empire type that has absolutely no problems with this though is a hive mind empire. If you'd like to completely outclass and dominate the empires and opponents around you with the hive mind authority, Click the video on screen now.